Welcome back to this week's episode of the Buckeye Blitz podcast. It is week number five. And although the Buckeyes had a bye week last week, Dustin and I did not because we're dedicated to the game. Um, no, no weeks off. And we're back again with uh, with an episode this week for the Indiana game that we, fingers crossed, are going to play um, this upcoming Saturday. But in this week's episode, we uh, we got some good stuff. We got some good stuff. Where there's not a lot of football happening this week, uh, but enough happened to talk a little bit about. So we have the, a rundown of some of the things that happened this week, a uh, preview Pretty much, we're we're really only going to talk about the Big Ten this week, because uh, some you know there's some important things happening and some important things did happen, and then uh, we will be moving into the Indiana game, which is at the moment the biggest game of the year for the Buckeyes. So we will uh, get right in, and like I said before, welcome, Dustin. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Looks we like we're going to this week, week, and I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, at this point, this time last week, we did not have a game. They can't. They canceled it Wednesday afternoon, so we're already doing better than last week. True. I know that there was a lot of people scared that Indiana was going to pull a little uh, uh, slimy move and say that they have some COVID stuff and cancel the game, so that way they'd have a one-game advantage over Ohio State to get them into the Big Ten championship game. Wow. But they, I know people were scared about that, uh, but I don't know how you just fake uh, <laughs> fake COVID stuff unless you tell all your players to go out and party. <laughs> so That's true. Uh, we are playing as of today, as of Wednesday at 624 right now. So hopefully all things stay the same. Um, it's weird to say that we're hoping for the game to stay on. Normally we would just be in full confidence that we're going to play on that Saturday, but 2020 is a weird year. Very weird year. Um, but with that being said, uh, the it, I think it, above all, it kind of shows you how fragile this season is. Um, and and uh, it really was kind of an eye-opener for us. I mean, I wasn't like super nervous about the game getting canceled because, um, you know, we're still a, a heavy favorite and still top four in the country. But um, you know, now I'm starting to get nervous. Now I don't think we can really afford two, two canceled games. So one was is probably enough for us. But this is definitely a very fragile season for us. Um, everything can be, you know, whisked away in in, in one one simple week. So, uh, but as of now, like we said, we're playing. So that is that's good news. And and uh, forward we go. Very true. Um, so. Obviously, we don't have a recap of the Maryland game. Um, we can pretend like it was a W because um, <laughs> we didn't lose. So that's, I guess, a W in that book. It was um, a W. Okay. Yes, we'll count it. Um, but uh, the Buckeyes, they tried to take advantage of the week that they did have. Um, they ended up playing dodgeball during the week off. Not a whole lot you can do besides continue to practice. So they decided to have some fun. I saw Kirk Herbstreit was really happy about that because he's like, at the end of the day, football is supposed to be fun. Even though they didn't play football, it was still right. fun. You um, know what have been really fun? Huh? Beating Maryland by 40. <laughs> Very true. I think that they all would have liked that a lot better. Right. Uh, I was really just hoping to watch a game against Talia Tagovailoa. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't think he, he was going to win against us, but it would have been still interesting to watch him play. Um, yeah, that, that was definitely the biggest bummer for, for me as well. Yeah. If it was a normal Maryland team, I would not, I would have cared even less, but because right. they had him, it was more intriguing, but right. luckily he's not going anywhere and we'll be playing them next year. So I guess we can just wait till next year to see that game. Um, Absolutely. I, 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 the one thing that, uh, came out of the dodgeball game that I did think that was funny was that, uh, Justin Fields, I think was one of the first people out in the dodgeball game. So they asked him in the interview about it, um, and he said he uh, throws such a beautiful ball that no one could uh, – everyone caught his ball. <laughs> <laughs> it can't possibly be dropped. That's the perfect response, honestly, to yeah. <laughs> sucking a dodgeball. <laughs> yeah, that's a great spin zone. Mm-hmm. Um, the only other th- uh, thing that really came out of this bio week was uh, Ryan Day talking about the fact that he had a bye game. I know he was pretty pissed about it. 
he's just like such a football guy where he can't stand not playing, uh, which I love about it. He, he mm-hmm. said that he would have rather had a, an abrupt randomly scheduled non-conference game that, to fill in for that bye week or even just a, a different conference game even uh, rather than having the uh, unexpected bye week that would have never happened this season. They were expecting to have no bye week. So there was no planning in, in play in this, you know, you, like you plan to have a game. So I, th- I think that there's a lot of planning that goes into bye weeks, even ahead of the bye week. So I, I, he was definitely disappointed in that, but he tried to keep things as normal as possible and try to give them a lot of game simulated reps, but it's obviously not ideal still. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I mean, our commissioner really sucks. So uh, there was no way <clears throat> I saw a lot of people tweeting like, Oh, Alabama is off this week. Ohio state's off this week. Might as well just make a play. There's no way in the world that was going to happen on such short no, notice. No. Um, so I think they were, they were pretty content with taking the bye week. I mean, they really had no other chance or no other choice. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we had a bye week in a season that wasn't designed to have a bye week. Um, so although we did not get a win, I shouldn't say that. Although we didn't get an attempt, we didn't have an opportunity to get an extra win. We also, which is a negative. We also had the opportunity to have a bye week, which is, which is definitely a positive. So do you think that, um, you know, in the situation that we're in currently that that Maryland game was more of a negative for our team or a positive. I think that when people look at, um, look at our like resume, they try to act like the missing the game is bad for us. But at the end of the day, as long as we win all the games, we're still one of the best teams. So we'll be fine. So right. in my opinion, I think it ended up being okay because we were not a team that like was on a momentum. So it's not like it killed our momentum. Um, even though we didn't really have any injuries yet, uh, knock on wood, we like so we didn't really like need it for rest necessarily like you would normally have in the NFL. Like how it's still it, besides like how was true, very true. Um, <laughs> because and like the only other injury was Cameron Brown, but he's out for the season, so it's not like he was going to heal for, <laughs> for the next game. Right. Um, but either way, having rest is still good. So like it's not like the rest hurt us. I think the only thing that it, like affected was in college, like we had, like with our team, uh, our defense needs a lot of reps and we missed out on reps and mm-hmm. playing against a pretty good quarterback would have really been good for our, our defense just to get those reps. Even if it wasn't a Clemson or Alabama, it was still important to have those reps. So I think that definitely sucked, but I don't think it necessarily hurt us. So I think it was like good because it didn't hurt us, but still probably would have been better with the game. Yeah, and and I think if you look at the box scores of the Ohio State games, like obviously Ohio State looks pretty dominant, but if you're actually watching the games, um, which me and you are, we, especially in the second half, there's there's a lot of like, it's, it's it, like the team seems kind of off at some points, you know, especially in the second half. And I think that hopefully the bye week was a good opportunity to kind of like reset and, and get things back on track because although they were winning games by double digits, which is always a good thing, um, it seemed like some stuff was a little bit off. So I think the bye week hopefully gives them a little bit of time to get that stuff corrected. Yeah. I think that's like, it, that'll be the, the biggest thing to look at it. I think it's too early to tell what the result of this bye week was, mm-hmm. you know, I think that if we come out and we, our corners really play well and we play well in the second half, then I'll say that it was success because we fixed the problems that we were weak at. Um, but it, I think it's just too early to tell. Um, yeah. I, I think it's just that, like, I agree, the, the four games that we have played or three games that we have played, we've won them by a lot, but we've never looked great in any of them besides the, but we've just been overly, like, overly matched in those games. So it's allowed us to kill the other team. Right. <clears throat> right. And I think that's a good point, too. It's too early because even if it, if it looks like a good thing, like we come out and win our next five games or so, however we have. Uh, by 50 points each, you know, you'd be like, oh, that bye week definitely helped. But if we don't get into the CFP, and the reasoning is because we had less games, obviously the bye week didn't help. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, that, that is definitely something to keep an eye on uh, moving forward. But I do want to transition into some of the other things that happened this week. Um, yes. I want to kick it off with uh, Wisconsin versus Michigan. I think this was a huge game because Michigan had the opportunity to kind of bounce back a little bit. 
Uh, but I think they did the absolute uh, opposite. And that game was extremely ugly, extremely early. Um, I turned it off after the first quarter, uh, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit into the second quarter, but I just stopped watching. I did not watch a single snap the second half because didn't need to. Why, why, why would I, you know, it was a blow really? from the beginning and uh, it truly was, was really ugly. Wisconsin like, is a little low key back. It's, it's tough to tell because Wisconsin looked really good, but it was also because Michigan looked, made them look so well, you know, right. you had two passes by Joe Milton, both interceptions, like right off the bat. Dude, you his know, stat like, line was, was like over four, two interceptions, like in the first quarter. <laughs> It was terrible. He looked absolutely terrible. Like the, the second pick that he had went straight to the Wisconsin defender with no Michigan guy in sight. It it was absolutely terrible. And it goes to show that like um, Michigan might be done for a little while. You know, I, I don't know how you keep Jim Harbaugh after this year. You know, every week we've talked about it might be over for him. I think this literally puts the nail in the coffin because they not one not for one second did they look good in that game and no i did not watch that game the whole game i watched the beginnings about the same amount as you did but mm-hmm. michigan fans are just completely giving up on this team you know the michigan fans that i do know they all said that they just refused to watch the game they didn't watch a single second of it because they could not stand watching it knowing that like way before the game even started they knew they were going to get blown out like that's not a good look you know yeah you know like yeah. we still old school fans still watch the games when we know we were going to blow the other team out like everyone watches the Rutgers game and they know it's going to be a terrible game, like not entertaining. <laughs> right. And, and us both being Browns fans, I don't think we've ever gotten to that point where we just don't watch the games, even no. though we've, we've been in Michigan's shoes for the last 20 years, but exactly. Um, yeah. When yeah. We I, I, every 16 game. <laughs> right. I don't know about Jim Harbaugh. I really don't because I feel like it's, and I, I said this last week and I probably said the week before that, but they're so tightly ingrained, like, that's going to be a really bad breakup, you know? I mean, that's mm. like, I, I'll have to think of some other examples, but that's like in, in the same kind of realm as like John Elway is the, is the Broncos GM right now, you know? He has done nothing besides bring Payne Manning in. He did win a Super Bowl, I'll give him credit, but with Payne Manning's help. But as far as anything else, like since Payne Manning, before Payne Manning and since Payne Manning was left, that team has been terrible, you know? And like, how do you get rid of John Elway as your GM? you know, when he is the Broncos, like essentially exactly. John Elway is the brain is the Broncos. And I feel like a little bit of that situation is the same. What's going on here with Michigan is like Jim Harbaugh went to Michigan, played for Michigan, blah, blah, blah. I came back. It was this huge deal. He's coached relatively pretty well the last few years, got him to some big games. They've lost a lot of big games, but now it's like, it's going to be a really ugly breakup, you know? And, it, and I think it's inevitably going to happen. Definitely. It, I really think that there's no way he gets out of the season. And that's not even as an OSU fan. It's just simply as someone that's objectively uh, a college football fan. I don't, you know, like his teams look terrible. You like every year they try to give him the benefit of the doubt and they give, they would give a reason to keep him. And one of the things that was always said was, well, he hasn't had a quarterback that he, that he recruited. Oh, right. well, Joel Miller, he recruited and he's looked god awful. <laughs> yeah. You know, like he looks possibly worse than Shea Patterson, and no one thought that that was possible. <laughs> like, so true. It, um, right. <laughs> but like you said, we've talked about him every week. I think he's done. Wisconsin, they're back and they looked great. Um, but they'll have a big test against Northwestern, who they continue to be undefeated as they beat Purdue, the only other undefeated team besides Wisconsin in the West. And uh, right now they actually uh, have better odds to make the CFP than Indiana does, uh, which is kind of crazy to think about. That is. But obviously that's going into the effect that they think that Northwestern can beat, I know that OSU beats Indiana, knocks them out of the big 10 championship game. If Northwestern beats Wisconsin and they happen to beat OSU, or even if they play OSU close, you could say that both teams get in, but it's, they just like Wisconsin Northwestern, they play this week. That'll be a big game, uh, deciding the West for sure. Yeah, and I'm I, and Pat Fitzgerald is is a really really good coach. Um, I I I have probably pretty confident Northwestern wins that game. You think that'd be Wisconsin? Um, no, no. I I what I meant to say is, 
um, like play that game, wins that game in the um, Big Ten Championship. Gotcha. So I do, so I if they do play with Wisconsin, I think they win because gotcha. they. Not, I'm sure I'm all over the place right now because they wouldn't play in the Big Ten Championship. But you know what I mean. Pat Fitzgerald is a good coach. I, he I, is. <laughs> I think they 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 may be Wisconsin. Um, I don't know. Forget I said anything. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. You're good. Whatever. But I agree. He is a good coach. The fact that he's put Northwestern in uh, in the Big Ten Championship game two years ago right. and then now has a chance of getting them back there. No one would ever think Northwestern of a good football team. So the fact that he's already done that twice in the past few years it's a big thing uh and he deserves more credit for sure um i think i just had my stephen a smith uh hunter henry moment there where he he said hunter henry's having an incredible season and he didn't play one snap all year i think (laughs) at least that was my yeah no that was that was my i yeah go ahead i'm sorry you're good uh Maybe maybe Pat Fitzgerald, if he looks for a bigger job, maybe he becomes a Michigan coach. I don't know. I doubt he stays go. with the Big Ten though. But that's um, a that's a good that's a good uh, point to put out there. Yeah, no one talks about it, but I, I, it's probably just simply because of the fact that he kind of seems to fit well with Northwestern and right. quite like. But I mean, it's. It's just interesting because not a lot of names have been thrown around for who would replace Jim Harbaugh besides Luke Fickle, and I, most people think that won't happen anyway. So, Rich Eisen. Speaking of Luke Fickle, Luke Fickle though, Cincinnati continuing to dominate in the Group of Five. Uh, they beat East Carolina fifty-five to seven, and they are just continuing to roll. Um, as a betting person, uh, neither of us really bet, but if you were. They, I think they've covered pretty much every game they've played, which is kind mm-hmm. of incredible, especially for college football. Um, and they've been favored really heavily in a lot of their games. Um, but I think the big question, uh, CFP-wise, is if they do pick a group of five team, these teams won't play this year. So it's kind of just a eye test. Who do you think is better, BYU or Cincy? Uh, well, they, if neither of them make the CFP, uh, they may play this year, so we might find out eventually. I hope um, so. Yeah, in a bowl game. But uh, I don't know. I mean, we, we, we had talked about this kind of last week, and I don't know if I know anything more this week than I did last week. Since he kind of has a really good defense, they, I mean, they've been putting up points, but they also play in the American. So it's not like I, – I just – I don't know how to th- – I don't know how to – like I don't know how to weigh that, you know, in an argument how much points they're putting up. But they're not letting up a ton of points, and which is which is huge. But BYU, on the other hand, is you know potentially first round quarterback. That's why they're so intriguing. So, I mean, truly, I think if they they were to play, I I feel like I would have to go BYU, and I and I feel bad saying that because I want I want UC to be like that fourth team so bad. Like I want them to be that fourth team so bad. But I think BYU would win just because they have that guy that can go out there and win the game for them, you know? And I don't know. Uh, what do you think? I, I think Zach Wilson is definitely the biggest difference maker in that game. You know, right. since his defense has been awesome, their quarterback, uh, Desmond Ritter, I think is his name. He's uh, yeah. been good. He's not, he has, he's not excellent, but he's good enough to score their points and win them games. So I think like Zach Wilson being in that game is probably the, the difference maker. And I think that's also why a lot of people, favor BYU over Cincy mm-hmm. but I kind of like Cincy better um I'll take the other side of this this situation I, I think that Cincy's defense um can really give a good test to Zach Wilson because Zach Wilson hasn't played like amazing defenses either sure um and I think that Zach Wilson I mean I think that uh since he's just better coached which I think is a big deal um and I think that they just are a better overall team where Zach Wilson obviously is the most important player in that game. I think that they can overtake him just in their overall scheme. I don't know. It's tough to tell. Um, one, I haven't really watched a ton of Zach Wilson play mainly just because they play at weird times. A lot of times right. um, I've watched a little bit more since he than BYU. I would love to watch them play though. I really would. I, I wish that the bowl games weren't really like, 
formatted a certain way where like a, each team is assigned to a certain bowl game. So that way we could see them play, you know, but I, I, I think that in most predictions they of bowl game matchups, they haven't been matched up together, but I would love to see that happen. They, I mean, I they might get into a, a new year's six game. Yeah, I think they both will be in those games. I just don't know if they'll play against each other, unfortunately. Yeah, I but hope it's, so. It's still a chance. Yeah, I think that usually it's just that they don't play against each other because they'll play, um, they'll play against like the top ranked uh, non Big Ten championship team. Like Penn State played against Memphis last year. Um, UCF played against Auburn that one year. Mm-hmm. So. It's interesting to see who they'll play. I think that both of them could beat whoever they do play unless they play like someone like Florida. Right. That's a good point. Well, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And maybe they'll just make a special COVID bowl for <laughs> teams for us to vote and, and they can vote to just play. Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure something out. I would love out. to see a group of five playoff tournament, but then it's kind of like you're relegating them to not be allowed in the CFP and you're saying mm-hmm. that they're not like equivalent to them at all. So you'd almost have to say the winner of this, the group of five tournament makes the CFP, but then like what's to say that they're good enough for that still. I don't know, but it's just an interesting idea. But anyways, uh, last big 10 news, Penn state continues to be absolutely terrible. They're now and four, which is insane to think about. Uh, they were a possible top 10 team uh, for the entire year. Uh, they expected to lose to OSU even when they were expected to be a good team, and now they haven't beat anyone. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's actually really insane, you know, um, because you're, you're exactly right. And I, I actually watched a little bit of their game this week, and uh, they benched Sean Clifford, and I didn't think they would yeah. do it, but coming out of halftime, they benched them um, in their back of Will – something can't I, I don't can't, I don't know the answer so I can't yeah it's uh, it's will will something but he actually played pretty decently well and they had a chance to tie the game there late at the end uh mm. but uh I think the last play they either threw a pick or it got sacked on fourth down or something like that so they were th- they were within striking distance so maybe maybe they come out this week I don't know if that was like I don't know why they benched Sean Clifford. I don't know if it was just because like, Hey, let's give this other guy a shot or if they're actually benching him, you know? Um, but maybe, uh, their backup, I'm going to look up his name really quick. Um, while you look him up, I think it's interesting because Penn state in every game, I think it is except for Ohio well, state. Is. Okay. That actually like sounds familiar. Um, yeah. but I think it's just interesting because they've doubled the yards, offensive yards of the other team in every game they've played except for the OSU game. Mm-hmm. So it's like the fact that they're losing this these games is kind of incredible um, and super improbable as well because every game that they're better, ta- they're more talented than the other team and every game they've been favored in and yet they keep losing except for the OSU game, obviously. Um, but it's just, I think that that's also why like it's, Probably Sean Clifford isn't the reason that they are losing. It's just a, a mess of a team right now, and they probably have well, no more direction. Well, I will say that they – well, Sean Clifford threw two picks in the first half that were really bad. Like, one was just really true. bad, and I think they're, they're having really bad turnover issues, and that obviously doesn't help, you know. I think it was like yeah. the first drive of the game, Sean Clifford threw a pick, and Nebraska had scored on their opening drive, and then Sean Clifford – threw a pick and they were down on like the five yard line. So Nebraska was up 14, nothing before, uh, you know, before the game essentially even got started, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Hopefully um, Will Levis actually plays well because I want Penn state to start winning games. You know, it really doesn't help Ohio state if Penn state just absolutely sucks. No, I agree. And football is just better when teams like Michigan and Penn state are good and that's why I think it feels so weird that that's what our situation in the Big Ten is. But I don't I don't know if that's going to happen this year. Yeah, we can. Uh, yes, it was ten. It was ten nothing before and six minutes into the game. So, yeah, I don't know. It was it was pretty ugly again. It was twenty seven six heading into halftime. They Penn State has six <laughs> interceptions on the season. The only they're. I, 
third in the Big Ten. Rutgers has seven, and Michigan State has eight. <laughs> wow, Rocky Lombardi. Yeah, not good. <laughs> not they, good. they have the uh, third most points per game <laughs> behind only Purdue and Ohio State. I mean, not points per game, uh, yards per game. And yet wow. they have the wow. game. <laughs> All right. Well, moving along here, uh, I see I see something about your guy Kyle Trask. You want to elaborate? Well, I will say, uh, as entertaining as he is, I will not say he's my guy because I am obviously rooting for Justin Fields in the Heisman race, and that's why I talk about Kyle Trask. Um, odds actually uh, on some sites, not all of them have Kyle Trask as the favorite to win the Heisman. Now, um, I think. A lot of them still have Justin Fields and Mac Jones ahead of him, mm-hmm. but Kyle Trask has stat-wise been the best quarterback in college football, especially lately. Um, he has more touchdowns actually in the first six games of the season than Joe Burrow did last year. And Kyle Trask has a tougher strength of schedule this year. Um, in the first six games, Joe Burrow did not play Alabama. So um, Kyle Trask has already have played Texas A&M and Georgia he did lose to, to Texas A&M, and I think that's going to be the biggest stain on him winning the Heisman. Um, if you have a undefeated Mac Jones or an undefeated Justin Fields, that kind of helps their case over Kyle Trask. But Kyle Trask has had more than five touchdowns in every game except for like one, I think. He's been crazy with uh, passing-wise, and their offense has been electric. Uh, Kyle Pitts has been awesome as their tight end. He might um, be the best tight end ever. I've, I've like people are saying like best tight end prospect ever. He's insane. And I didn't even hear about him going into the season and he's been awesome. Me either. Me either. Yeah. Um, he's definitely going to be a first rounder. Yeah. And I think he, he was hurt last week and I think he might be out he again was. this week. Um, so it kind of does suck just because he's so that duo was so exciting to watch. Um, but I think it's just, he contrast really came out of nowhere. You know, no one really was talking about him at all. And now he's a, probably going to be a first round pick um now a heisman favorite oh, for sure. one of those people that like came out of nowhere and that always happens every year where you have someone come out of nowhere to be a heisman candidate i mean no one talked about joe burrow at all last year and he ended up being the first overall pick and heisman winner right is Kyle Trask that kind of guy i still think no because the name game of joe Bur- uh justin fields and trevor lawrence is a big deal um I still think that Justin Fields has a better chance, but the fact that he loses that Maryland game is a huge, huge deficit behind Kyle Trask, who's going to have um, like three more games than Justin Fields will at the end of the day. That does so. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the odds right now that they're on FanDuel Sportsbook, and so Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Trevor Lawrence, and Kyle Trask are all plus two fifty. So they're five, five to two. Um, you know, odds. And that includes a one loss Kyle Trask. So you think if Florida wins that game, he's absolutely the odds on favorite at this point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think the, the biggest thing is that Justin Fields debatably doesn't have any big game the rest of the season. If Wisconsin ends up being a good game, then that's his Heisman game. You could say, but some people put their vote in before the, uh, championship games and that championship game I think is later than the SEC championship game so they might not get their vote they might have their votes decided by the time Justin Fields play and then you are and then Mac Jones and Kyle Trask might face off in the SEC championship game whoever wins that game might end up winning the Heisman honestly there you go that's um, that's some good analysis there we will see I don't know I I, you, I think you're completely right with uh the name game being huge and still don't see a world where, you, you know, it's not Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence. I thought Zach Wilson was going to be the guy that came out of nowhere and mm. like came into that Heisman race. <clears throat> and he's right now has the fifth best odds. So he's not necessarily out of it, but um, I think you're completely right that it's definitely turned into the Kyle Trask like uh, show as far as who, who can, you know, come out of nowhere and do that. Yeah. And it, it all depends on how you end the season, honestly. So, I mean, you look at Kyler Murray, he went off in the end of the year. That's what won it for him. Um, last year. Joe Burrow was pretty much all year. Joe Burrow, yeah. Joe Burrow was just insane all year, but he had really big games towards the end of the year. Like 
the Georgia game, the Alabama game. Um, mm-hmm. won, won a national championship, so he definitely deserved it. Exactly. Um, but anyways, um, we'll talk about Indiana's game in the preview. So we'll go through a quick CFB preview real quick. Um, just we'll go, uh, what are your thoughts? North, Northwestern versus Wisconsin, big game for the Big Ten West champion. Think it, uh, Northwestern has a chance to upset? Yes, I absolutely do. I actually do. They, there's definitely a chance to upset there, you know. Uh, I mean, there's a chance in any game, so I guess it's kind of a tough question to ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Graham Mertz looked good, but I don't think he looked as good in the mm. Michigan game, um, considering how poor their defense is. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I would put money on it, but, I mean, I, I would be curious to see what the line is for it. But, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely potential for an upset there. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, Wisconsin is still kind of recovering from their two weeks off and all oh, the for COVID sure. stuff. Um, and I think that might have played into a part of how why Graham Mertz played badly. But I think we put him on a pedestal because of how well he played week one. But he's playing against Illinois. Like, Illinois is right. not a great team. And he's, at the end of the day, he's still a, uh, a first-year starter, and he's only played in two games. You know, like, and the second game – he didn't have to do anything because his rushing and like his running backs won it for him and their defense uh, like prevented Michigan from doing absolutely nothing. Like he had to score two touchdowns and he won the game. Like they only allowed 11 points to Michigan. So right. it's tough to say. I think it will be a good game. I think Wisconsin ends up winning it. Uh, I think they're seven and a half point favorites right now, but I definitely think it's going to be a good game. I'm excited for uh, that one. I'm looking at, uh, never mind. I was looking at the wrong – it was Wisconsin uh, Northwestern, but it was the wrong – you know, it was the wrong game. It was from last year, so. Uh, yes, seven, seven and a half right now. It's at seven and a half. Uh, that's – that's act, like, if you actually think about it, that's not that big of a, of a spread, you know. It's not, uh, no, especially in college football. Right, so. It's a bigger cool. deal if this was the NFL, but. And it's in uh, Chicago, I think. So we will see. Mm-hmm. That's one that I'll definitely keep an eye on. I, 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 that's one of the games I'm more excited about besides the OSU one. Um, then Penn State plays Iowa. I legit think that this is another game Penn State loses. Yeah. Iowa has been pretty solid this year. Um, mm-hmm. They killed Michigan State. Um, I, I legit think Penn State comes out of that game 0-5. Which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's a really good chance, and you know, if, if if things weren't going bad enough for Penn State, they lost their starting running back. Um, he, yeah, which which really sucks. If you know, yeah, he, he got diagnosed with a heart condition. I'm probably sure you know the name of it, but um, pretty much ending his football career, which really sucks because Penn State was already really short on running backs. So um, they're just they're just they're going to be playing with a backup quarterback fifth string running back uh and they're they're kind of just a mess all over the place so i i, I could see that definitely going to own five james franklin potentially on the hot seat um probably he's definitely feeling it is his butt's getting a little warm that's for sure yeah if i mean what we play eight games in the season so he only has to lose one more game to be under 500 which probably will happen yeah and that'll be the first time they've been under 500 since 2004 well, Michigan and Penn State play in a few weeks, so that'll be uh, a real a real good game to see who's actually the worst. I, I tweeted about that the last week, and I said that, that I'm really looking forward to watching that game and calling it the Suck Bowl. The Suck Bowl, <laughs> yep. Who Honestly, I, uh, James Franklin or Jim Harbaugh? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I think, I think I would be leaning Penn State winning that game. Michigan's look so bad. They they look a lot worse than Penn State. Penn State's at least been like somewhat competitive, but they've just I mean, they're they're one tough call away from beating Indiana, you know, and all that stuff. So I don't know. It's it, Penn State just had really bad luck, I feel like, and, and they right. they really have had bad luck, but Michigan has just looked bad. They look like they actually want to win where Michigan looks like they're just showing up because they have to. Right. <laughs> Right. All of them want to just go home before the game even starts. So the, speaking go. of that, do you think that they beat Rutgers or do they continue their three-game <laughs> losing streak? 
Oh, man. I, I, from past experience, like this past, like recency bias, you would say that Rutgers <laughs> would be in, in a better position to win, correct? But it, it's debatable. It's so hard. It's so hard to physically say that Rutgers would beat Michigan, you know? Mm. This is Michigan's bounce back game. They they beat Rutgers by three points this week. You think so? Yep. I'm I'm going Michigan. All right. Um I think that if if Rutgers does beat Michigan, I think they have to fire Jim Harbaugh right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they I mean they probably should, but I don't know if they will. Um, I, I don't think so either. They only just have like three more fires. games. Yeah. yeah, I think the only reason that they would keep, they 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 keep him con- like for the rest of the season is because of coronavirus. You just it's a bad look to fire a coach unless you're right. South Carolina. <laughs> All right, I was gonna say who takes over Josh Gaddis, and he's like also a horrible coach. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. Last preview, uh, last game of the week that is pretty big is we've talked about them a ton, uh, probably more than a lot of other podcasts. <laughs> uh, Cincinnati. Uh, they've got a big game this week, probably their biggest game besides SMU. Uh, they play UCF this week, and they are only six-point favorites. So that's a big deal for them. Uh, they've been double-digit favorites for like every week except for maybe SMU. Um, that's a big game for them, and I think that if they can kill them in that game, I think that they are legit, legit CFP contenders. Is that the easiest money of the week is, is picking Cincy to cover that? I think I legit would would pick them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, six points. That's only that's only a, that's only a touchdown, and you cover, and they've been absolutely murdering whoever they play. So I think that's really easy money uh, to yeah. pick UC to cover that that spread there. Yeah, I mean, UCF has lost to Memphis and Tulsa this year already. Since he, since he beat Memphis forty nine to ten, <laughs> all right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That might that might be the easiest money, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that that spread get get bigger as we get closer to the game. It's actually uh, um, like their ESPN's consensus pick. They even have it at five and a half. Like they, they actually give UCF a better chance of winning that game according to FPI. This is why ESPN's FPI is stupid. <laughs> so dumb. I literally don't trust that at all. How can you say that they have a better chance of winning? But whatever. It's worse than uh, like NBC's or whatever. NBC's is always super far off. Uh, (laughs) Or honestly, ESPN's is always off. Like for the football games, Mm. they always give teams like the worst odds and they always come back. Of course. So those are our biggest games of the week as in Big Ten uh, impact and CFP impact. No like big games besides the OSU Indiana game. Uh, especially with five games being postponed slash canceled this week. Um, COVID just continues to be a wrecker on the season. So yep. we'll get into the biggest game of the week. Uh, this is where the Big Ten, I mean, like the uh, Fox Big Noon kickoff show will be, not college game day. Um, It'll be at the Masters. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> college game day, I think that um, – I don't remember where they're going. I'll get back to that doesn't really matter. It does not affect Ohio State. So I guess it doesn't matter. But OSU, uh, even though it's a top 10 matchup, they actually open up as huge favorites. They are 20 and a half point favorites with a 66.5 over under. Um, what are your first thoughts on that cover? Um, that's that's a really big spread for a top 10 matchup. I mean, that's, that's, that's really huge, but that shows you, you know, the confidence in Ohio State. But um, – I saw something that Indiana's coach is named Tom Allen and they were doing a press conference um, pretty much asking him about this game and essentially hitting at like the huge spread. And this dude starts crying during it. Like, like legit crying. I don't know if you saw this or not, but Tom, Tom Allen's like, I don't know. I'm not like a Tom Allen expert or anything, but I did a little research on him and he's like, he, he's like homegrown, like from Indiana. I'm pretty sure if not Indiana, definitely from like the Midwest, like, he was a high school coach. Yeah, very passionate high school coach. Made his way up to being the head coach of Indiana, and he was like, he was like, I don't care, like who doesn't believe in us, like we're gonna play as hard as we can, and like starts crying, and 
I think he just has the Indiana team like super motivated. They're they're a very emotional team. Um, that's the only reason I could see Ohio State not covering the spread. Like if, if your coach cries during a press conference, that's worth at least seven points. I agree. I agree. And that's why I, I like we'll get it. We'll get into score predictions when out at the end. I, I think I would probably take Indiana in this game because that's a huge spread. I, I think that's yeah. just too big of a spread. It's essentially three scores. It, yeah, and they uh, it, we just haven't been killing teams to like think that we would kill Indiana by that much. I, I just I, I think we win, and like I said, we'll get into that more. But I, I twenty and a half is a lot. So yeah, that's I mean, a that lot was my first reaction. I think the first thing I did instantly when I saw that spread as I started trying to find biggest top ten matchup like spreads, and I couldn't find anything. Any stats yeah. on that? Probably have to do my own research to find that. Um, but it would be interesting to find where this ranks among ten top ten matchups. Probably would have this, to go kind of far back to find something like that. This is this is all I have to say about that before we cont- continue forward. Is that like, although it is a really big spread and it is a top ten matchup, so those things would not fare well for Ohio State beating the spread. But with that being said, it's a COVID year. Rankings are super weird. 100%. If Indiana, if Indiana was undefeated but not top ten in the country, I I have a feeling that I would be very confident. I mean, Ohio State's beaten them by twenty one or more four of the last five times we've played them, or something like that. Mm-hmm. So the last just, time they were within ten points was twenty fifteen. Right, that's Kevin Wilson's year when he was the coach, yeah. and we and we have Kevin Wilson now. But it's just like. I, I think that they are not as good as their ranking. Like 10, like 10 is a really good football team, you know? And, and they're nine. <laughs> and they're nine. Yeah, they're nine now. Exactly. Like nine is a really, 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 really good football team. And I just don't, I, just, I think that they, the rankings, they just got like a really lucky in the rankings and they, they've just beat who they beat and they haven't really played that good of teams. And Mm. I don't know. I think an undefeated Indiana team any other year, they're probably not even in the top 25. And I mean, we would pre- we would be saying, oh, we're going to beat them by 30, even though they're undefeated. So that's yeah. still kind of how I feel about it. Um, week 12 last year, number nine team, Penn State. Penn exactly. State was pretty good last, last year. Yeah, they're like a really good football team, you know? <laughs> And Oklahoma was 10, and they were really good <laughs> with Jalen Hurts. Right. right. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like, a weird year. I don't know if Indiana got that, 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 that much better in one year, you know? Yeah. It's so. the same thing with Miami. You know, like Miami, not a great team this year, but it's just a really weird year. So they've been in the top 10 most of the season. Yep. Um, so storylines, things to watch for the game. Uh, I think the – Indiana wise, the biggest name to look at is Michael Penix Jr. Um, I think it, like, even though they've only played four games, I th- he's pretty legit. You know, he's a pretty mm-hmm. solid player. We're going to be talking about him next year as well as being one of the best uh, quarterbacks in college. And if Graham Mertz c- does not do the same thing he did week one, and he kind of just continues to be average, especially with how many games he's going to play. I think it's very likely Michael Penix Jr. Ends up being second team, all big 10 right behind Justin Fields. He's been really solid this year. Um, yeah. But do you think that he is the real deal since it's only been four games, or do you think he's just had a really nice four games against bad teams? Yeah, I mean, I I think that by saying he's the real deal doesn't mean that he's, like, the best thing in the world. You know, it's not like – True, true. I mean, Justin Fields is, is obviously an elite prospect, and just by saying that M- Michael Penix Jr. is the real deal doesn't mean that he's not – you know, I don't want to take anything away from him too, because he, he, he is, yeah, I think he's the real deal. That's what I'm trying to say. But mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think that necessarily means that like he's going to be competitive. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a good quarterback. Um, is he a top 10 quarterback in college football? Probably mm-hmm. not. I think that's where like you right. look at it. Right. You, I, uh, I feel like you just have to compare it's really hard to compare this year to other years, but you kind of have to take it in context with the, like you have to take this season in a bunch of context, you know, Definitely. like there's so much going on. Everything's wacky. Everything's wacky. Like Ohio <laughs> state 
we're, we're in November, the middle of November, and Ohio State's played three games, you know? <laughs> like, everything is so wacky that if, if it's a normal season, I think Indiana is, is very much – shifted towards the the mean you know or the median they're 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 a very good team they're a good team but they're not a, a very good team you know yeah. i mean it, you can just by st- stating this fact you can see how weird the season is that in a normal year this would have been our 11th game of the season and we would be playing michigan next week to end the season yeah right and it's like <laughs> It's, it is so crazy if you when you put it like that, you know. And we're technically halfway through; like we're not even halfway through our season yet. <laughs> and we right, so we're three games, games in. Yeah, it's crazy, it's and the Big Ten is just a complete mess. So, like, you could say Michael Penix Jr. tied for second, maybe with Graham Mertz as second best uh, quarterback in the Big Ten, and yet it's still weird to say that because it's such a weird year for the Big Ten. Like name name three other big 10 quarterbacks that are even worth mentioning their names you know mm. you can't i mean yeah. sean clifford sucks joe milton sucks tanner morgan who's produced, sucks. Who, who's, who's produced quarterback couldn't tell you exactly couldn't tell you like it, it doesn't matter you know i don't know that's what i'm saying it's like and, and northwestern's peyton ramsey and that was uh indiana's quarterback <laughs> indiana's quarterback who left because michael Penix jr was better than him right <laughs> all right Right, and oh. it's like third best quarterback in the Big Ten. Does that really mean a whole lot this year? Yeah, no. no my my guess is no. I mean, and then you have to throw Tua in there, or Tulia. Tulia. And I think he's in the conversation as well as maybe That's all, true. all Big Ten second team. But mm. I don't know. Go ahead, continue. No, I'm just ranting. No, you're good. I mean, um, it's it's just like he's obviously the biggest name. He had the insane one of the biggest plays of the season against. Penn State um I still will remember that for a while that was huge just kind of shows what kind of player he is he's gonna keep his team in the game at all times um Mm -hmm. uh, but the biggest thing to think about with OSU Indiana is just crazy that this is the first time both teams have ever played while in the top 10 which is kind of crazy they've played like 90 times I think it is (laughs) wow first time both in the top 10 um Ohio State's beaten them 75 times. <laughs> um, I think they're 75 and 15 against Indiana, something like that. And the last time Indiana has even beaten OSU was 1988. They tied wow. in 1990, I think it was, um, but they haven't beaten them since 1988. So it's really a mismatch. Um, I mean, Purdue, Iowa, they've all beaten us more recently than Indiana. And I probably would say Indiana has been a better program at least in the past six years, maybe, which is weird to say. Not not Iowa, but Purdue, I would probably say that. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, yeah, so I just, mean, Ohio State just has their number. Yeah, it just kind of shows how big of a mismatch this game is, even if they are better Historically, this year. Historically, yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, but, I mean, we talked about it. Are they really a number nine team? Probably not. This will definitely – I think it's almost a bigger test for them than it is a bigger test than, for us. Agreed. You know, it it, it kind of shows, like, is Indiana really a legit team? If they compete with us, you can say yes. And like They don't have to beat us to say that they're a legit team. They just have to compete with us. Um, where OSU, I think they have to play a really good game because I think that this is the best chance for them to show themselves besides – the possible matchup against Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship game. And we might not even play Wisconsin. We might end up playing Northwestern. You know, right. like right. we might have a, one of the easiest schedules we've had in the past few years. I, um, I will say this. is like Indiana has absolutely nothing to lose. I mean, mm-hmm. we just talked about it for five minutes, but they've literally never been in the situation that they're in right now ever before. And yeah, in the, the entire time that Ohio State and Indiana have played football, the last 90 times, They've never been in this situation that they're in now. So they, you know that they're going to pull out at all the stops. They're going to yeah. do everything in their power to win this game. So I would not be surprised to see them, see them get like fluky, um, tricky, tricky, like sure. pull out literally all the stops. So mm-hmm. it's a huge test for them. I mean, like I said, they, they, they have never, and they may never ever be in this situation ever again. So, I mean, imagine yeah. if Indiana wins, you know, they skyrocket to, the fourth best team in the country, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, if you're an Indiana fan, this is probably the biggest week of your life thus far, as far as Indiana football goes. That's a good point. Um, they really like, I think that's like a, also a reason that it sucks coming after the bye because we might walk in there a little like uh slow or a little rusty where they're ready to come for us. So I, but I think Ryan day does a really good job of preparing us for these games. So yeah. I'm not too worried about that. I think that they play a little close and we score a big later on in the game. Um, especially because we've had such bad second halves. I think that that's what the, they're going to try and show is that our second half team is still good. Um, I think that's like what Ryan Day is probably going to look for the most because it's what his biggest complaint has been lately. He's not worried about the corners, even though we are. He's not really worried about the corners. He's worried about how we play in the second half. So yeah. I think that's probably the biggest thing to watch for us. Other things that I think I'm going to be looking for for OSU-wise is how they do against the pass because Penix has been such a good quarterback for the most part, and their receivers have been pretty solid, um, whereas our defense backs haven't been great. Um Indiana's offensive line is pretty good. So um, I would like to see our defensive line play really well against them. It's kind of probably one of our bigger tests besides the Nebraska game. Um, we really need to play well and pressure Penix to help out our defensive backs because they've been bad. And then lastly, just how well we can play on offense. I think obviously we're still, we'll be fine. We'll score a lot of points, but it just would be interesting to see how we do on the rush, uh, running side of the game because of the fact that their defense has been pretty good. They've allowed only 73 rushing yards to Michigan State and Michigan the past two weeks, and they lead the Big Ten in sacks and interceptions. So it's a pretty big defense to play against. Um, yeah. But they've played against pretty bad quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, that that is a really good point. Like, the, the, the bringing up those stats is a really good point. But at the same time, like, look at the teams that they're playing. None yeah. of those teams have been – really good penn state has won a game uh michigan has won one game michigan state i think it's only won one game so um yeah i mean Rutgers they're not really Rutgers is bad yeah so kind of again take it with context um it's kind of the the overall like we keep on saying it like the overall general theme of indiana is they're a good team probably not great kind of just take everything in context like why they're ranked 10 and Exactly. Um, we'll go from there and watch it be like a super close game now that I'm saying that, but um, <laughs> I, I actually do feel pretty, pretty confident about it. And I feel like it's how I feel about every Ohio state game for the last 20 year, 21, 22 years of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily um, like 95, 95% of the games I feel really confident about, but um yeah, I, I I'm actually excited to watch Penix play because I, I am one not um for one not like a super huge believer. Um, I think he's good. Again, I'll say it again, but um, it'll be interesting to see how he plays like against a really a really good team and a really good defense. Yeah, I I agree. I think it it's one of the the f- more fun games we've had this season. So I am looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I expect it to be a little bit more entertaining than the Penn State game was. That's for sure. I hope Especially so. Because their team is is entertaining. I think that they probably play well in the second half and that's probably the biggest thing. And that's what, like, do you have any, before I get my score prediction, you got any last minute points you want to add in there? No. And I think you nailed it right on the head earlier. It's like a way bigger test for them than for Ohio state. Ohio state's been in this situation at least one game every year for the last hundred years, it seems like. Um, So it'll be fun to watch. I'm excited to kind of see like a team, a game that actually has a meaning, it's like some meaning to it, and an exactly. Indiana team that's kind of has their back up against the wall, and and they're just like in a corner, and see what they pull out. Um, should be really fun to watch. Yeah, I am excited for it. Um, score prediction: I will cover wise. I'm taking Indiana. I think that they cover in this game, and I'm taking forty two twenty four. Very very basic score. Forty-two twenty-four, and I think that was the over/under was sixty-six. So you have yeah, it so like right on there. <laughs> You're on it. Um, sixty-six and a half. So I guess I'm taking the under. So I'm going to say Ohio State will not let up the gas in the fourth quarter. We'll probably be up a decent amount, fourteen twenty-one, somewhere right around the spread um, going into the fourth. 
I don't think they're going to let up on the gas because this, this year is the eye test above all. Um, you have to pass the eye test. Ohio State is at three, so um, they don't necessarily have to pass it as much, but they want to make sure that they have all the support they need to, to stay in the top four. So I will take Ohio State covering. Um, and I, I want to see them put up 40. Would you say 40, 42, 42. 22? And I was, I was like reluctant to give them 42. I was about to go right under 40 at first. Yeah, I want to see him put up 40. I will say Indiana scores three touchdowns. So that's 21. Uh, I want him to hit the over, too. So <laughs> <laughs> 49. That's a, that's a div, that's divisive, divisible by seven, right? 49. Maybe seven touchdowns, yeah. 49-21. Okay. I mean, I, I do, I do like your point that when it's kind of an eye test game, and we're going the to, biggest eye test game yet. Yeah, and we didn't play last week. Exactly, they, like that's the biggest thing. Like, I think they will definitely like they every week we've like every time we've talked about it. I feel like we we talk about like we expected a chip on their shoulder this season, and we haven't seen that at all. You know, no one's really played on the chip and shoulder. They've just played enough to play well and win the game. I mean, obviously by a lot, it's not like we're playing and just barely winning games, but we haven't really had that like, chip on the shoulder. Like let's kill this team and give the college football payback or whatever, like wake them up to us. They've just like looked good enough to look the part of a number three team, but I would like to look like, I want to see them show that they can compete with an Alabama and a Clemson team. Yeah. And Notre Dame. Yeah. I think I think my attitude has has changed a lot from last or two weeks ago to this week. Two weeks ago, if you remember, I was like, "Well, they pretty much just have to win every game, and they'll they'll be in as long as they don't lose, they're in." Now exactly. I think they see how fragile the season is, and they, they there's a very good chance they might get another game or multiple games canceled. So they they have to come out and show a reason why, even if they only play four games this year, why <laughs> they deserve to be in the CFP. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, I think the biggest thing is like take it to I think home. they can get into the CFP, but it's the eye test that will help them be a better position in the rankings. You know, yeah. like last year shows how important it is where you're positioned. You know, like we went from one if we were one, like we were going into the Big Ten Championship game, we probably would have made the championship game. But because we dropped down to two, because of some close games in the season, we ended up losing to Clemson, you know? So yeah. I think that, that would have been a big deal. Um, so game at home at 12 p.m. on Fox like I said in the beginning big noon kickoff show will be there so Gus Johnson and Joel Klatt will be announcing the game it's yes, sir. probably the game of the week besides maybe Oklahoma Oklahoma State only reason we didn't talk about that game is just because it doesn't have a whole lot of impact on the CFP or Ohio State um, so we're really excited uh, first 12 p.m. game in three weeks now so that's different for us and I do kind of like having the 12 o'clock game rather than the night game for this week Agreed. Um, I'm super excited even if we are expecting a big win I'm still super excited absolutely I agree about the 12 o'clock game it just feels much more natural to me definitely I think it's supposed to be like somewhat decent in Columbus this weekend I think it's like high of 60s nice so that'll oh, wow. last. yeah I'm excited all right uh any last points though that's it. That's all I have. Besides that, all I have is uh, the closing, and that goes as such. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Love conquers all. It's the most powerful emotion there is. Love. Love for your family. Love for your teammates. Love to compete. Love to win and love to fight. You're going to win one game, and that's all it's going to be. And then you come out and you try to find the win the next one, and the next one, and the next one. That's all it is. Everybody has to do their job in order to win. Forget all the expectations. It's now your time.